Hi folks, Cutter Comp. What is it? How do you use it? And most importantly, when should you use it or what should you think about implementing it as a tool in your workflow and how you machine parts? Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So Cutter Comp is awesome. For those of you watching this channel, you probably use CAM to program your parts, probably use Fusion 360 or a similar type of software. This makes it really easy for us to output various tool paths like adaptives and contours or so forth. So raise your hand if you've done a finishing pass, say 2D contour, you've taken the cut, you've grabbed your measuring tool, your micrometer, your caliper, etc. You've measured the cut, you've decided it's a little bit undersized, you've came back to your cam and you've done something like stock to leave, let's adjust and do a negative 0 0.0003 tenths radial stock to leave and you've gone back and you've rerun that code. That's what Cutter Comp can help us do. But before we dive into that, let's rewind a second and, and take a look at what Cutter Comp is. Take a look at this part. It's five inches by two inches. Now, if you had to hand program that part, which I'll be honest, is not something I have ever done, what would be easier? Would it be easier to hand program that part by writing out in notepad or on pencil and paper or at the machine controller, five inches plus adding the radius offset of the value of your tool so that you had a tool path that correctly walked around this outside of this part plus that radius offset? Or would it be easier to just write a tool path that walked exactly around the outside of the part. Not only is there less math and addition and risk of mistake, but your code is going to match your print that you're probably looking at, and that's a really nice continuity to be able to see those two. And so that's what Cutter Comp does, is instead of offsetting the toolpath in your CAM software, you're offsetting it at the control. And that's not a subtle nuance, because most of us, myself included, who've been machining for years, just posting out code from CAM, we give our CNC controller, Pathpilot, for example, here, very little decision-making or computing requirements. We literally force feed it the exact toolpath, the exact lead-in, exactly where it's going to go. And that really does work very well. That's one thing I want to emphasize. Using Cutter Comp will not make your machine more accurate. What it'll do is it'll let you more easily update tool diameters that can help you walk in a part, and it can help you more easily replace tools and maintain tolerances and just have a better workflow. So comparing these two operations, the first one is our normal 2D contour where under passes, the compensation type is in computer. So what in computer means is it's in cam. It means the output code is dumb code. It's literally doing all the heavy lifting and it's driving that toolpath exactly where it should go based on, in this case, the contour that we've selected as well as any smoothing, any tolerancing, any stock to leave. Cutter Comp, we edit this, go to Passes, Compensation Type, In Control. That's what Cutter Comp means. Cutter Comp happens to be the colloquial term that we all kind of use for it. But what we're really doing is we're allowing the machine controller, your path pilot controller for a Tormach, to handle the tool diameter. So. One thing you could do with this, which is not really what people do and I don't recommend it, is it means you could switch tool diameters. Instead of machining this with a 3 16th diameter tool, you could reduce it to a 1 8 inch or increase it to say a quarter inch. There's some other risks and issues with that, but in theory, that's what it could let you do. That's not really, again, though, the value of Cutter Comp. The value of Cutter Comp is it pulls in the diameter value from the machine controller. And this lets us quickly and easily and reliably adjust the tool's diameter. And that's a diameter value that stays in the controller. So even if we're posting out numerous operations or we're going to different parts, that can be really, really valuable. The most important thing that I find it useful for is what we're going to do today, which is let's walk out the diameter of this interpolation bore and let's get an awesome precision fit for a dowel pin. So the task at hand, we've got a bore that measures 0 0.501 in diameter. We're going to drill it out first with a 3 8 inch twist drill. Before we start this really important offsets, tool 21 is our 3 16 end mill. We have to set this diameter 
We'll start with it at its nominal diameter, 0.1875. running 180 surface feet per minute at about four thousandths of an inch feed per revolution. That leaves a decent amount of stock, so we're using a 3D adaptive. I don't need the 3D nature of it, but what I want is the rest machining, so that recognizes what the drill already removed, and we've got a 20% optimal load 1.5 thou feed per tooth. And that's going to come in here in, in two depths of cut, remove the rest of that material, but leaving five thousandths of an inch stock. And that's what we're going to come back to with our 2D contour. But again, instead of doing a normal tool path, where if we look at this example, we have our 0 0.501 diameter bore. When we are using a 3 16 diameter cutter, toolpath would normally be calculated as this 0.501 minus the 0.1875. So the dashed line here would represent normally what our toolpath would actually look like in Fusion 360, but that's not what we're going to do here. Instead, the toolpath is programmed around the actual geometry of our part. If we toggle on and off our solid model, you can see that is literally exactly where the toolpath is. And we'll do a quick chamfer at the end. Half inch gauge pin, quite snug, just a hair of wobble. If we do a dry pop test, good pop. 501 gauge pin does not go. So that's our goal. So we have got to walk this hole out just a hair. So I'll come into offsets. And that's the beauty, is we can, instead of worrying about measuring this, or going back to our CAM software each time and doing a little bit less stock to leave and reposting the file and loading it and running it, we can just type our tool diameter. We can change it to be 0.1873, two tenths smaller. So by making the tool diameter smaller, it's gonna widen the tool path, which is going to open up our board. So to make our hole bigger, we make the tool smaller. And that may sound counterintuitive. You may think if I want a bigger hole, I should make the tool bigger. But here's why. Go back to our sketch. When we were cutting with a 3 16 diameter tool, this happens to be on the regular cam tool paths, but the same principles apply here. This is the diameter of our tool path to create this 0.501 bore. But our problem right now is that our bore is too small. So we need to increase the diameter of this 0.3135. So how do we do that? Well, if we tell it the tool diameter is smaller, and I'm gonna exaggerate it here and say 0.175, which is going to increase the size of our hole. There's two ways to think about this. One is that you're lying to the controller to force it into getting what you want. The other is the exact same thing, except you're not really lying. You're saying, if this is the output I want, I've got to change the inputs because you may have tool run out or tool edge wear or deflection, any of these other variables that can result in not getting the exact perfect diameter that you want. In our example here, instead of doing a traditional cam path, it happens to be the cutter comp path that's running at the full edge, but the same principles apply. We say a smaller tool or reducing the diameter will result in a bigger cut for this inside bore. We run just our 2D contour with the cutter comp setting.
501 still doesn't go. One of the things I like to do though is take the half inch and see if the feel changed. So sure enough, yes, the half inch has more wobble now. So we do know that we opened that up and it's amazing what a difference a few tenths makes on the fit and feel of a hole. And this is what's so nice, folks. Literally, right at the screen, right in PathPilot, a quick update, cycle start again. We're adjusting our toolpath. Close, really close. And again, our half inch, looser yet. You, you'll still get a pop out of this half inch, even though it's got a little bit of looseness to us. So it goes in, almost no play. You can pull it out by hand, it's actually a little tricky because it's slippery, but you can. How about that? Isn't that awesome? I could do that all day. A couple of things before we wrap up. First off, Card here to the NYC CNC page where we'll have the most up-to-date information on how we're using cutter comp and tips and tricks and troubleshooting. One of the things that we've already noticed that's really frustrating and quirky is, let's say we wanted to cut that half inch diameter hole with a quarter inch end mill. You'll get an, what looks to be an acceptable toolpath infusion, but when we post it, PathPilot's going to give us an error at the machine controller that basically says it's not sure what to do and it would generate a gouge. And what that is, is this value right here on line 22. And that J value, because it's less than the tool diameter, or 0.25, the toolpath won't run. The easiest answer that I've got for this right now is don't use a tool that's about half the diameter of the feature. In other words, we're machining a half inch diameter hole, so use something that's under a quarter inch. Now you should be able to do this though, so I don't like that as a long-term answer. We did figure out how to get it working, and we did so by editing the horizontal lead-in radius to a very specific number, and you can see now when we post it, that J value is equal to or greater than the tool diameter, so this would run but you've got to be careful and you've got to take a look at the path pilot visualization just to make sure everything's right because it is, again, not a subtle nuance of how the linking moves and lead-ins are handled because Fusion is not generating the final G-code. It's handing off a portion of that responsibility over to your machine controller. So obviously where we just used it, walking in a dimension for a bore fit, for whether it's a large bore or perhaps an outside feature, super awesome. It's just like we talked about in our video on how to organize tools in your machine shop. You make the right decision and you make better parts when the right tools are at your hand because we're all intrinsically a hair lazy. And when you've got to walk back to your computer and open up an operation and change a value and post it out, it's a pain in the butt. So that's where Cutter Comp's awesome. However, the best place for it, and you're going to see this in next week's Wednesday widget, is thread milling. With that, folks, take care. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. See you next Wednesday.